today I'll be taking webinar for computer vision and Tesla autopilot. Uh, these are the contents uh, for this webinar. Um, I'll be talking about what what features we have correlated with computer vision and human vision, how computer vision and image processing are different, how exactly computer sees an image, what our neural networks and we'll have a coding session also, but what are fundamentals of computer vision languages that are used and frameworks that are used. Then we'll talk all about uh, Tesla Pilot. Then I'll I'll give you some tips how I started my computer vision journey. Uh, then I'll give you some tips on how to get jobs or internships uh, in computer vision field, right? So let's talk about fundamentals of computer and human vision. First of all, computers don't see uh, image like we see, right? Uh, humans, see image as a photon, like the light ray uh, falls on our retina and this retina gives brain signals to the uh, cortex and the right output is introduced, right? That's how we see. Whereas computers see uh, image as just a bunch of numbers. That is in mathematical terms, it is a matrix, a 3D matrix for colored image and 2D matrix for a grayscale image, right? Let's say uh, if you want to mimic a human brain, like a human, how, if, if you want to make a model which is compatible with uh, human brain, the number of neuron, neurons that you, human brain have, we, we have to face these kind of channel challenges. So let's, let's, let's take that account. So a human brain uh, comprises of 86 billion neurons, right? We have 86 billion neurons in our brain, which are uh, responsive for our, all the computations that, that happen. Let's say we, we make a model which is 86 billion neurons uh, big. We have to have a large computation power to, to run this kind of big neural network, right? So if we have 86 billion neurons and in a normal computer, one neuron will have one weight, that is one, one value to it, and that weight stored value should be one floating point 32 bits. That is a normal uh, operation that a neural network uh, operates on one floating point 32 bits which is four bytes so in plain english that means one neuron will take four bytes of data so 86 billion uh, neurons will take around 344 gbs of data which is still not feasible for us normal supercomputers they, they, i mean that's feasible but not not on a production scale right like GPT is 175 billion neurons, but it's not for everyone. No one can run it on their smartphones or uh, computers. They need explicit servers to run, run that thing, right? So the point is, we, it's still computationally not feasible. Uh, we have the power, but we don't have the computational power yet. Let's see what are the differences between human vision and computer vision. So as I told you, human see object uh, in context of light and computers see objects or image in context of matrices of numbers, right? So basically, it's simply a matrix of numbers. What are the difference between computer vision and image processing? Both are cohesive. Image processing is basically a subset of computer vision, right? So image processing is mostly dealt with transformation of an image, and computer vision mostly deals with what is exactly inside the image. To extract a uh, useful data out of, uh, from an image. So let's say there's a cat image or a dog image. There is a cat in that image that is computer vision. Classify it or to say, hey, there are two dogs. At this position, there's a dog. That is computer vision. Now to resize that dog image, to distort that image, to, to increase the, you know, uh, brightness of it, uh, to apply photometric augmentations, clear it, shear it. That's all comprises in image processing. Both are uh, cohesive. Uh, they normally, uh, before computer vision, to clean data or to have some data augmentation, image processing is the first step that normally uh, we do, right? So how exactly computer sees an image? Right? In normal cases, computers see images as matrix, matrix, right, as I told. As you can see in this image, we will see a elephant, right? We can see that. There's an there's an elephant, but in computer terms, um, this elephant is represented by these kind of numbers, right? So there are a bunch of numbers. What these numbers represent, we'll we'll talk later, right? 
image have basically height width and number of channels what are those number of channels those number of channels are they can be three normal cases three uh, red green blue or blue green red if it is a black and white uh, image it can be only one which is there's no channel it is just one one channel that is uh, white so that is it computer sees basically generally a three channel image that is rgb that's what is a uh, normal norm for it and also images can be 2d so you may have heard about ms data that is in black and white which is in 2d it right? just they only have height and they only have the color image so this this is this is a color image right so these have three channels red green and blue and the yellow surface is what you what the computer sees i mean that's where the actual image is formed so let's say if we take one of the pixel the pixel is that that is one one cell that one cell is is basically a pixel which is made of some value of redness in it some value of greenness some value of blue if we have no red no green no blue it will be a black if you have everything at a at a full full that is 255 value so there is 255 value for red 255 for green 255 for blue that is a uh, black pixel right so the mean av average of these three are taken and not exactly average but computer sees them as an average right so that is how pixel by pixel the whole image will be developed and this is normally fed to a a normal neural network so this is 3 by uh, so this is uh, height by width by 3 so 3 is the number of channels uh, there can be different representation of the same image that is one of the representation is hsv you can search for it uh, later on it is not so much used but as a image processing people use it to represent some pictures replacement of rgb but most in most of the cases you will see this rgb so let's talk about a little bit about neural networks what is what exactly neural networks are so neural networks are basically they are a bunch of matrices right if we talk in plain english they are nothing there are, there are no neurons there's no no fancy thing going on it's just matrix multiplication so you you see the first input layer is a bunch of matrix right the matrix shape is n comma 4 right second neural second layer that is hidden layer that is the matrix that shape is 4 comma 5 right so like this they are just matrices right so in normal neural network we have input layers right where your image will be or your features so as to say or your data that you you will be training that neural network on will be set to and we, we will have a output layer where your actual prediction of that neural network will be taking place so let's say it's a classification network it the your output will be the number of classes that you have right if you have three classes that that's the case in this place you will have three output nodes right so you will have something like cat dog or some other animal right three classes or you can have only one uh, output node which you can you can regress on so what regress is regress is, regression is just uh, giving out uh, a actual value a discrete value right uh, a fuzzy value from 0 to 10 it can be 0 to 10 it can be minus 10 to minus 10 depending on you. Uh, how you set your set your output layer it depends on the data that you have in the and so let's talk about what are the fundamentals of computer vision language right so so in the normal case computer vision at this moment python is the only language r is also there but not a industry standard but python is the thing that is used as language in computer vision framework and tensorflow and pytorch both are used uh, for industry standard right so these both are open source you can go you can use python or you can use tensorflow and pytorch for free uh, tensorflow is uh, google's open source framework and uh, pytorch is basically facebook's uh, open source framework both frameworks basically provide uh, ml execution environment so what is that so the ml execution environment is basically machine learning execution environment or ai execution environment right so they have an environment where they have some c++ pre designed code uh, made to run your model and you can make your model using their pre existing layers can make your own custom layers these layers will have interface of python but they 
need Python, there will be a C++ code, which will be running in better optimization uh, than Python, because Python is a scripting language. We cannot really use Python as main language for neural networks, right? It doesn't perform well with GPU or hardware level. C or C++ is the best choice here. That's why both are there. I'll, I'll talk about more uh, TensorFlow, which is mostly used for um, industry standard because it is a production centric, you know, uh, framework. Whereas PyTorch one is a research centric. More of your research work will be seen in PyTorch because it is, it is more Pythonic, uh, whereas TensorFlow has its own way of writing it. It's more like, uh, you know, it's, it, it have its own unique feature. So as you can see, Python, uh, sorry, TensorFlow just have a Python front end with TensorFlow distributed, you know, execution engine running beneath it and which and beneath that, there is CPU, GPU, Android, iOS, and wherever you want to run. TensorFlow runs on anything. So there's TensorFlow JS, which runs on JavaScript. Forget about Android, iOS, just focus on CPU, GPU. That's what you guys will be needing. Most of the guys will be needing, right? It provides basically, it also has C++ front end, but most of the, most of us will be more interested in having a Python front end, right? So we'll be writing code in Python. Um, let's import. TensorFlow, right? We will need some NumPy, right? So NumPy is basically used for matrix operations. Let's make up a model. Let's make an empty model. Sequentials, because that's what we will be needing. An empty model. Let's add some layers to it. So our first layer will be a simple input layer. The shape will be two. Because we will be okay. So I'll I'll tell you first of all what this new network will do. Uh, we will be we will be adding two numbers, right? So we will be training this network on on training data. So the training data is basically x1, y, uh, x1, x2, which which are two numbers, integer numbers, and y is basically uh, addition of both of them. So when we will be training this. Uh, once it is trained, we can now feed new numbers to it, and it can add both of them. So the neural network is basically trained to add two numbers, which is a very unfeasible way to train a neural network or to use a neural network, right? So let's add input layer. We have input layer. Let's add a dense layer. So this dense layer, this is input node, right? This is input node, right? This is a hidden node that we saw in the TPT. Uh, let's say we will add 10, 10, 100. Okay, let's say we will add 10. Uh, let's add a last layer, which is output layer, right? So this will be output layer, and it will have only one, because we, we want to regress this. Um, data on only one uh, output. That is the addition of the two numbers. So this is input node, which has two integers, two inputs, that is x1, y1, and this is output that consists only one output, that is y. Let's return this model, right? We have a model, let's build a data feeder, which will feed data to our, you know, network. So we'll have x, which have two numbers, so, as our network input has two numbers, so we have to feed it two numbers. So we will use NumPy to generate random two numbers, right? Uh, our numbers will be from zero to, let's say, three, and size will be 32 comma two. Why 32? 32 is basically a batch size. Batch size is nothing but we will give, uh, so understand this as there are 32 samples, and each sample consists two numbers, so 32 rows and two columns. So there will be uh, 32 numbers, right? Actually 64, but there will be 32 rows with each row consisting two numbers, x1, y1, right? Now, if we have this, we have to make y also, and y is basically x1 plus x2. Now, where to get x1? x1 is basically in the first column of it, right? Why I'm doing a colon here? Colons means, this colon means basically uh, to get 
every 32 numbers and column one and this is column two and we are adding both of them so we have our data right now we just have to iterate this data over for loop we'll have 10000 iterations of it right So we can't return this, right? If we do this, comma this, this is wrong because return says statement will basically return from this uh, function which we don't want. So there is something called yield which produces x and y when this up to this range that is one zero 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 the number, right? Ten thousand that is. So this basically iterates over ten thousand iterations and produces x and y randomly chosen right we have our data uh, feeder let's call our model let's name the model differently add right so we have the model we will compile the model so why we compile to give it some loss so let's say we will have a loss of mean squared error Right, mean squared error is nothing but uh, the y, actual y, and the y produced, I mean, predicted by the model. Both will be mean squared and the loss will be back propagated. So, this I can't really talk about the whole process of a neural network. Right, we can't discuss back propagation, uh, what are different losses, what is optimizer, because this we have to talk about Tesla autopilot also. So, just keep in mind that this loss is mean squared error, which takes the actual predicted y and the original y and makes the mean squared error. Right? You have to take optimizer to it, uh, industry standard or let's say a common thing to have an optimizer is Adam, right? So you can search for it to the normal optimizer, which uh, also also saves. Uh, moving average gradients, so you can search search for them. Um, we have our model. We have to fit it, right? So we first call our data generator to generate the model. Um, we will call epochs. We will have hundred epochs. We will have um, steps per epoch. We will have like hundred steps per epoch. We will have that size. And that size we have to choose thirty two because. That's how we have generated our data, right? Uh, we have to do a breakpoint because we have to screen for some data also. And this one is okay. My training is going on, so we have to disable the GPU, right? So we have to do something like this to disable the GPU. By the way, this is a command line program. Okay which I use. We have to take uh, Conda TF, TensorFlow 2.2 Conda environment, which have all the libraries that I need. That is most basic NMI. Right. So, Okay, so the training is going on. You can see the loss is going all the way down. All the epochs are done. It trains pretty fast because this is a very small neural network. Uh, normally, this kind of small neural network is not used, or you will be seeing in normal uh, industry standards like I call it model, right? So let's infer. So model is trained. Now we can infer some values to it. Model, we can. Infer np dot p dot as array. We have to give numpy arrays to the model because 
normal list is not possible. Okay. Let's take two values, one comma one. Let's say yeah. So as you can see, uh, let me give you numpy output of it. So as you can see, one comma one, the network is giving output two, right? So the network is now trained. We can also give values like one comma four. It gives four point nine 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 five. Think about it. Why it was four point nine 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 five, but not five exactly five? And I'll give you a hint. It is this something or something related to loss of right. This six point eight nine e raised to power minus one five. This is something related to. Okay. So what I want to show is we have used values. I mean the data feeder was basically you know this random integers. From zero to three, right? But so zero, one, two, three. All this combination of all this was given to the network. But the network can also predict one plus five also, as you as you saw here, one comma four. Sorry. So which was not in the uh, context for network, but it 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 learned to add two numbers. That's why it was able to do this with very minimal. Um, errors like 4.995 is very much. Okay, so session for coding. The this way you can at least um, see how normal how neural network works. This was in by the way this was in TensorFlow. So and this is not a industry network how people train. This is very very uh, basic uh, neural network because we have some time constraints. We have to talk about Tesla also. So that was it. Um, let's talk about Tesla uh, autopilot. Right. So Tesla autopilot is basically state of the art um, automatic driving assistant system right now at this moment, and they are, you know, day by day iteratively um, improving their technologies. Okay. So. Autopilot in Tesla basically comprises four things. Uh, one is uh, fleet learning. Uh, second is path policy. Um, third is object detection sensors for depth. Fourth thing is so. So all this using all these four parts, um, Tesla's autopilot thing can be possible, right? So we'll talk about them one by one. Uh, let's first talk about what is fleet learning. Like, uh, before that, let's. I mean, first of all, Tesla's uh, autopilot basically means, if you don't know, is most of you will know, but most of you that cars drive, right? And not just drive, but intelligently drive, right? Like, what is intelligently driving? It is like it will give you um, real-time feedbacks of what is in the, um, you know, in the environment. It will have a 3D knowledge of the environment intelligently. It will it will stop when there is a pedestrian, right? It will it will deaccelerate when the, when someone is cutting it out, cutting your car out. It will it will it will give you access to the car if um, it is it makes no prediction or it fails, right? So it is handling stuff in intelligently, right? Using deep learning. 